Ciao mondo, hello world, hola mundo, hello mount, konnichiwa, ni hao, namaste. We're here today at the 42nd International Vicenza course on AKI, CRT, and ECHOS, and uh, we are sharing a very important cappuccino with uh, Professor Peter Pickers. Now, it's interesting to show that uh, cappuccinos have been for 10 years uh, important appointments uh, and moments of discussion for studies, for uh, new ideas, uh, for uh, uh, new developments in the area of critical care nephrology. Now, today we are discussing with uh, Professor Peter Pickers an interesting aspect that relates to the results of the phase three trial of the combinant human alkaline phosphatase for patients with sepsis associated AKI, where ilophotase alpha, a human recombinant alkaline phosphatase with renoprotective effect, was shown to improve survival and reduce major adverse kidney events at 90 days in sepsis associated renal. Uh, uh, acute kidney injury. Revival was a phase three trial conducted to confirm this efficacy, but today we are moving into a more uh, uh, wide area. In fact, you see that the title of this cappuccino is a new approach for addressing cardiac surgery related uh, renal damage. So welcome uh, Professor Peter Pickers uh, um, and uh, but we are very pleased to have you from the University of Nimegen. And uh, we would like to discuss with you and describe the medical need to prevent damage during and post cardiovascular surgery. In particular, we know that uh, recent overviews have demonstrated that more than 2 million people globally undergo open heart surgery and may be at risk of uh, AKI. So we would like you to describe a little bit the potential of ilophotase alpha, the clinical experience, uh, possibly uh, referring to the previous studies, but also to a new phase two clinical trials uh, in cardiac surgery associated AKI. So Peter Pickers, uh, this is uh, uh, your moment to, to tell us a little bit. Yes. Thank you so much, Professor Ronco de Claudio. It's an honor to be uh, here in the cappuccino uh, session. Um, so the work with recombinant alphabetase focused on sepsis-induced AKI uh, for the last 15 years or so. Uh, and of course, sepsis-induced AKI is the number one reason of patients in the ICU to develop AKI. So this was the most important population to look at. Uh, and what we saw of the different trials were formed was that very consistently that there was a renal benefit of the treatment with the recombinant alkaline phosphatase. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the phase three trial was prematurely stopped uh, because of a lack of an effect on survival. Uh, which was the case in phase two trial, uh, but we could not confirm that. But still, the renal protective effect was confirmed because the main. Uh, so now the company has decided to go also to the uh, number two reason of AKI in the ICU, and that is uh, cardiac surgery induced AKI. Uh, Excuse me. This is also a fair. Excuse me, can you just uh, repeat, uh, because we probably had the glitch on the on the connection. You said that there was uh, uh, interruption early in the phase three trial, but uh, the renal protective effect was confirmed by what? Uh, by, the, by the observation that the make 19 incidence was less in the active the treatment group compared to the placebo treated patients. Excellent. And so there were less people with a decrease of more than 25% in their GFR and also less people that needed renal replacement therapy over time. Uh, so this was, again, a confirmation of the renal protective effects, uh, but the survival benefit that was shown in the phase 2 STOP-AKI trial in 300 patients 
was not confirmed in the revival trial in 650 patients. So we could not confirm the survival benefit, but the renal effects were similar that we saw before. So now the number two reason for AGI in the ICU uh, being cardiac surgery induced uh, AKI is now addressed by the company. Uh, and there, of course, are differences between cardiac surgery induced AKI and sepsis induced AKI, not only in the mechanism of action or the mechanism of how AKI is induced, but also by the fact that cardiac surgery is an elective procedure. Uh, and so the benefit of that is that we can actually start treatment with the compound prior to surgery and then repeat another dose after surgery and so that we have the therapeutic effect there hopefully before the insult is actually occurring and so maybe that would increase the therapeutic of the compound i would like to uh, ask you in fact uh, that uh, you know before affecting survival or mortality i think we have to learn exactly how to use the drug how to use the strategy for protection and showing that you can prevent the incidence of cardiac surgery associated acute kidney injury, you might finally eventually lead to an improvement in survival since we know that AKI is a deadly complication. However, for the benefit of uh, the people listening to this cappuccino, I think it will be important for you to explain how it is important to proceed step by step before we end up discussing mortality and survival. Yes, so that is definitely true. I think what we have learned over the sepsis trials, that there are indeed subgroups of patients that appear to have more benefit than other groups. And so uh, in the sepsis trials, we included patients that fulfilled the sepsis three criteria and also fulfilled the Cadigo criteria for early AKI. Uh, but what we did find indeed was that the benefit was most pronounced in those patients with already renal impairment prior to the sepsis episode. And so that's what we use now in the design of the phase two cardiac surgery trial, that we have patients that will undergo cardiac surgery with cardiopulmonary bypass, we have selected procedures that are associated with the longer duration of cardiac pulmonary bypass. But we also have as an inclusion criteria that, that their pre-existent GFR needs to be between 25 and 65 mils per minute. And so these are patients that have no renal reserve, have a higher event rate of API. And so the clinical therapeutic benefit might be more known in this subgroup. That's interesting because uh, Rinaldo Bellomo will present also during the Vicenza course uh, the results of this trial uh, where uh, renal functional reserve once more is indicated to be a very important factor either to protect or to increase the risk if, redu if reduced of uh, patients undergoing uh, cardiac surgery. We were among the first to describe that clearly that if you have a reduced renal functional reserve, you are at higher risk. But the other uh, important aspect is that if you incur in a AKI episodes, your renal functional reserve may be reduced uh, uh, downstream in the clinical history of the patient. So I think uh, we are now trying to identify in more detail uh, subgroup uh, identification, uh, endotype uh, uh, identification of patients so that we can be more effective in describing the effect of an intervention of a drug or whatever, an extracorporeal therapy. And this will probably uh, let us to avoid, to dismiss uh, drugs and intervention as non-useful just because uh, the quality of the enrollment and the population we studied was not sufficiently selected. Well, yes, thank yes. you very much. I just invite everybody to read the revival paper that was uh, published by you. In which journal do you want to 
uh, remind people? Yes, it was published in Intense Care Medicine. Excellent. And uh, also, I would like to thank uh, AM Pharma for sponsoring this cappuccino in the occasion of the 42nd Vicenza course. I think it's the moment for us to drink our cappuccino and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you. Excellent. 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 Thank you so much, Claudio. Thank you very much.